Good morning, everyone. We will be starting shortly. Um, yeah. I'll go through the statements and procedures out. Yeah, okay. Good morning, everyone. We're ready to start. I'll just go through some statements and the procedures for the meeting. Uh, the, <clears throat> excuse me. This electronic meeting is being held in accordance with Section 238 of the Municipal Act 2001 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. <clears throat> uh, we have Chair Alan Edwards, members Joe Quinn, Lisa Groban Green, Ron Bosenworth, Sharon Creaser members of the Committee of Adjustment, and we do have a quorum. Um, Township Staff President are Derek Hammond, CAO, David Pink, Director of Development Services and Environmental Sustainability, Ryan Allen, Manager of Planning, Bryce Sharp, Planner 1, Caitlin Walker, Planner 2, Lori Forbes, and Jane Sieber. Public input on the August 10th agenda was invited at the following email address, planning at muskokalakes.ca. The motions have been pre-populated with random movers and seconders to expedite the meeting. Members shall physically raise their hand until the chair has confirmed the vote. If the vote is unclear, a verbal, a verbal vote shall be recorded. This is not considered a recorded vote. I'll just go into the procedures. The plan will provide an explanation and purpose of the application. The date notice will circulate and will present any submissions received. The meeting will then hear from the applicant or the applicant's agent if they wish to add any information. Please provide your name, mailing, mailing address, and postal code for our records. The committee will hear from those in support of the application and those in opposition to the application. The committee will then hear the applicant or the applicant's agent respond to any questions or concerns raised. The committee will then have the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant or staff. The committee will debate the application and make a decision based on the information presented at the hearing must be noted the chair has a vote on each application and can participate in the discussion. There is a 20 day appeal period from the date of the de decision. In the case of a minor variance application, a building permit is not available until after the appeal period and no appeals are received. When you're present at the hearing, please provide us your name and mailing address. Any presentation is limited to five minutes unless otherwise permitted by the committee. Please the resolutions are automatically written and positive to assist in completing decisions in a timely fashion as to opposed to writing on each resolution. Uh, this does not in any way mean an application may be approved. And just one last thing, please take down the pink sign that was posted advertising the meeting. Thank you. You don't move. Yeah. Uh, moved by Member Green, second by Member Quinn. Be it resolved that the Committee of Adjustment agenda dated August 10th, 2020, be adopted. All those in favor? Chair's a little bit slower. Okay, thank you. Chair's a little bit slower. The last one that usually just took up her hand. Okay. Um. Are there any uh, declarations of uh, of uh, interest? No. Okay. Um. Minutes. Yep. Just getting to that one now. Okay, and we call the, the meeting to order. Sorry, we had some technical difficulties. <coughs> Moved by Member Quinn, second by Member Green, be it resolved that the minutes dated July 20th, July 21st, 2020, be adopted and approved as circulated. Any questions or comments? All those in favor?
That is scary. You've read everything, haven't you, Andrew? Yes. Okay, so we're all set there. <coughs> and the uh, the first application is uh, A8119. And we'll have that, uh, okay, that's Mr. Sharp. Good morning, Chair Edwards, members of committee, applicants and agents, and members of the public. Uh, Chair Edwards, just before I get started, I just wanted to make sure that you could hear me okay? Yep. Okay, that's great. The first application to be heard is minor variance application A-81 slash 19 dash amended in the name of Hoyle. The subject property is known municipally as 1082 Island Park Road. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan and drawings beginning on page 36 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicants proposed to construct a two-story garage with storage on the second floor. The maximum permitted lot coverage on the entire lot is 5,626 square feet or 10%. The proposed lot coverage on the entire lot is 6,189 square feet or 11%. Requested variance equates to 563 square feet over what is otherwise permitted. The committee considered a lesser lot coverage amount in January of 2020. The application has been amended to reflect a higher lot coverage amount and the application was recirculated to um, effective Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 11 days in advance and two submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by Neil Donald, the township's chief building official, and Mr. Donald has no Ontario building code objections. The second submission is by Ken Becking, the township's director of public works, and Mr. Becking <coughs> objections. I have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration. I would note that the proposed garage will be subject to the township's site plan control process if committee grants the requested variance. Staff have no objections and I have no further comments to make at this time. I would be happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to, to uh, comment on this? So the owner isn't uh, okay. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Okay. So I'm Trina Clark, and I'm here from T Square Design Studio, 167 Medora Street, Port Carling, Ontario, P0B1L0. Um, as mentioned, the variance requested is for maximum lot coverage, and the Hoyles wish to construct a two-story garage to provide space to park their vehicles out of the elements as well as extra storage on the upper level. As mentioned in the report, the property was very well, very well vegetated and the shoreline buffer provides a great visual and audible barrier to the lake. The proposed garage is to be located partially on an existing sleeping cabin footprint, allowing very little trees or vegetation to be removed. The setback from the high watermark is also becoming greater than what the sleeping cabin was. The existing setback was 58 foot three inches and is now becoming 67 feet, which creates a more desirable condition with regards to the zoning bylaw. <coughs> also conforms to all other bylaw requirements, making this application minor in nature. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support of this application? Is there anyone here wishing to speak in opposition to this application? No? Okay, are there questions from the members? Okay. <coughs> Mr. 
Moved by Member Bosensworth, second by Member Treaser, be it resolved application A81 slash 19 amended Hoyle to permit the construction of a two story garage with storage on the second floor, which will result in a lot coverage on the entire lot of 6,189 square feet or 11% as shown on the plan attached of the notice of decision is hereby approved. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. And that is carried, thank you. And reasons. Minor invariance. No neighbor complaints. But. And our next application is A20 slash, sorry, A08 slash 20. Thank you, Chair Edwards. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so the next application to be heard is minor variance application A-08-20 in the name of Zidanovich. The subject property is known municipally as 1021 Hester Lake Road, Unit 12. I would direct the committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 55 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicant proposes to construct a two-story addition the proposed addition will be set back 29.5 feet from the high water mark. The required front yard setback is 48 feet. The variance required is 18.5 feet. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 11 days in advance and two submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by Neil Donald, the township's chief building official. The Development Services Department has no Ontario Building Code objections. The second submission is by Ken Becking, the Township's Director of Public Works. The Public Works Department has no objections. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration. <clears throat> if committee is considering approval, staff would recommend that a site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for the revegetation of the property. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? The owner, okay. Hi, it's Stan and Tina Zivanovich. I'm not sure, can you hear us? Yes. Uh, so our address at home, 161 Tanners Drive in Acton, Ontario, postal code L7J2Z5. We've been property owners of uh, 1021 Hessner's Lake number 12 uh, for 19 years as of the end of this month. And we've made a decision to um, increase the size of the two existing bedrooms facing the lake uh, just to make one larger bedroom because our kids are a little bit older and are requiring a little bit more space. And what's the existing bedroom on the main level that faces the driveway will technically become a storage room for us and access with stairs to the new hopeful existing bedroom on the main floor that my husband and I, who have been paying for this property for the last 19 years, would maybe finally get to have a little bit more view and, and uh, breeze off the lake that we haven't had, but our kids have enjoyed with the two bedrooms that they've had. And then to add the second story, allowing for an additional bedroom upstairs facing the lake and one on the, uh, on the side facing the driveway side. We have no issue adding vegetation if that's gonna be required uh, as per your uh, instruction in the application info.
Very good. Thank you very much. Is that Thank everything? You. Yes. Okay. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support of this application? No? Is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application? No? Okay. Are there questions from the members? Yes, Mr. Bonsworth. I think the effect of this is you are adding one bedroom to the site. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Uh, through you, Chair, to the, uh, the township, uh, have we, are we sure that the septic system can handle another bedroom? I believe there was a, uh, a report from the building partner, wasn't there? <coughs> Mr. Sharp? Through you, Chair Edwards, uh, I believe we did receive a comment from the township's chief building official stating that he had no Ontario building code objections to the application. I would expect that uh, if he felt that servicing was going to be a concern that um, that we would have heard that uh, from the from the chief building official. Thank you. Yes, Member Creaser. Um, so when this comes up to be a building permit application, they'll be required to do a report that the septic system is sufficient. It's part of the building permit process. So I assume that that's what's going to happen on this. Any other questions or comments? Moved by Member Creaser, second by Member Bosenworth. Be it resolved in application A0820 Zizanovich to permit the construction of an addition to an existing dwelling 29 feet at the closest point from the high water mark as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision is hereby approved, subject to the following condition. One, that the site agreement be entered into along with securities for revegetation of the property. This agreement is to be registered on title. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. And that is carried. Thank you. And reasons. No neighbor objection. Minor in nature. Thank you. <coughs> the next application is um, A 1120 McNeese. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A 11 20 in the name of McNeese. The subject property is known municipally as 1112 Bruce Lake Drive. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 74 and 75 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of application is summarized as follows. The applicant proposes to reconstruct the dwelling and reduce the size of the existing shed. The proposed dwelling will, will, will result in 8.8% lot coverage. The permitted coverage is 8%. The variance requested is 0.8% or 134 square feet. The proposed dwelling will be located 8.2 feet from the interior side yard setback. The required setback is 15 feet. The requested variance is 6.8 feet. Notice of the public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 11 days in advance and four submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by Neil Donald, the township's chief building official. The Development Services Department has no Ontario Building Code objections. The second submission is by Kem Becking, the Township's Director of Public Works. The Public Works Department has no objections. The third submission is by Nancy Watt, a neighboring property owner. The submission is as follows. I am sending this information to you in relation to the McNeese Minor Variance application. We are in possession of the original subdivision site survey from our 2004 land purchase. It includes most properties on Bruce Lake Drive, including lot 22 at 1112 Bruce Lake Drive. The lot size on this survey differs from the site survey submitted with the McNeese minor variance application. I noted this lot discrepancy when reading the application on your website but was unsure if it was up to me to report this concern in my letter to the committee of adjustments or directly to you in planning. I think it is prudent to submit the correct information before the hearing 
because it will determine the final dwelling size in relation to the 8.8% total lot coverage. Thank you, Nancy Watt. Now, Nancy Watt also submitted a follow-up letter and her letter reads as follows. To whom it may concern, we reside full time at the adjacent property at 1114 Bruce Lake Drive. Please accept this letter and the accompanying attachment as opposition to the proposed minor variance. Relief from section, uh, and the minor variance is relief from section 4.1.3 of bylaw 2014-14 as amended being a minimum side yard setback requirement of 15 feet. The proposed dwelling is to be eight feet from the closest point from the side lot line. The variance requested is seven feet. So we oppose this request for the following reasons. One, there are many existing mature and newer border and boundary trees. The border trees are co-owned. The boundary trees have roots and branches that cross the property line. New construction activities required to build the dwelling in the proposed location may damage or destroy many of these trees. We do not give permission for Mr. McNeese to remove the border trees or to access private property to remove healthy boundary trees in accordance with Ontario Municipal Act 20, 2001 and Ontario's Forestry Act. See attached photos illustrating the trees between the properties. We purchased the property, oh sorry, number two, we purchased the property in April 2004. At the time, the property line had been mostly clear cut. The existing border and boundary trees have only just established themselves in the past 16 years. New construction may destroy and compromise the health of these border and boundary trees and any losses due, con due to construction will begin permanent changes to the tree canopy. Number three, Bruce Lake was designated as a sensitive lake in 2015. Removal of healthy trees will impact on quality, lake quality. Number four, both waterfront properties are small in size, 100 foot shorelines, and the building and building a dwelling within the minimum side yard setbacks of 15 feet will impact on the enjoyment on our property. In fact, Mr. McNeese has sufficient width with 70 feet of property of which he can build his 45 foot, four inch wide dwelling. Number five, waterfront WR2 bylaws have become very restrictive. Our dwelling was constructed in 2004 and respects the 15 foot side yard setbacks. The homeowner is aware of the restrictions and like his neighboring homeowner should respect the current bylaws. The new dwelling can be easily designed to the appropriate size and positioned on the lot so that it does not encroach on the minimum 15 foot side yard setbacks. Please submit this letter to the Committee of Adjustment for consideration to the hearing scheduled on August 10th, 2020 and kindly send us a written notification of the committee's decision post meeting. Kindly note that we did not receive a written notice in the mail for this hearing prior to the writing of this letter. Thank you, Mike and Nancy Watt. So there's also some attached photos, which I think we can share with the committee now and two PDF documents with some more information about the Bruce Lake area and water quality that Nancy Watt and Mike Watt have submitted. Are we the screen share? Uh, yes. <laughs> So these are the photos that were submitted by Nancy Watt in her letter. Um, and they're just showing the side yard setback between the two properties and the trees between the lot lines. Can I ask you a question? Uh, what um, building is that? Is that the, uh, the applicants or is that the neighbors? So the brown building or dwelling yes. you see in the photo is the existing dwelling on the subject property. 
And how, how close is it to the lot line now? So it's the exact same setback as being requested, eight point, okay. 8.2 feet, um, yeah. So in other words, it's not going any uh, closer to the lot line than it No, it will not be any closer. The proposed building actually has a very similar footprint to the existing dwelling. Okay, are there questions from the members? Uh, okay. I thought that in the drawing, it shows that the building right now is pivoted. And so the new building, the whole side of it is eight feet, whereas in the existing building, only the corner is eight feet. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. So I just, before we get into too many questions, there is another submission that I probably should read. Um, the fourth submission is by Carol and Milan Kovic, a neighboring property owner. The submission is as follows. Dear committee, the application for minor variance by Derek McNeese should not be granted. There are many reasons for this. Mainly, he has never maintained his property to any acceptable standard and has made no real effort to carry out the work outlined in many orders posted at his property by Muskoka Lakes. He does not abide by the rules and regulations and we do not, uh, that we do, that we all do, sorry and has shown that he does not care about his lake neighbors or Muskoka Lakes. He is an irresponsible property owner who does not merit any special consideration in this matter. Just ask him when the last time he cut his grass on the property. It is not in the interest of Muskoka Lakes to grant Mr. McNeese's minor variance, Carol and Milan Kovac. Um, staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration. Staff would also like to note that the applicant has submitted an updated site plan which has been included in the agenda package, but was no, submitted after we circulated. The updated site plan proposes the new dwelling be positioned 10 feet closer to the high water mark. The reduced front yard setback complies with the township zoning bylaws, but does not, and does not require a variance. So, staff have no further comments at this time and I'll happily answer any questions anyone has. Thank you. Okay, questions. The owner and agent are here. Okay. Which one would you like first? Uh, the, I guess the agent and then the owner. Mary Spears. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, I, is he not there then? He's, he's, he's there. Hello? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Mr. Sorry, Spears. I don't think I have a great internet connection. Uh, Larry Spears here from Linwood Homes. I'm acting as the agent for Derek McNeese. Um, mm -hmm. We've been working on this design for a number of years now and uh, have come up with the design that Mr. McNeese is happy with, that we think fits all the criteria um, for the township and setbacks. We have, I had originally um, agreed to move the building back from the high water mark to preserve some of the trees and to um, stay as far away from the side yard setback and from the existing septic. <clears throat> Recently, when Mr. McNeese was up at the property, he realized that there was a large oak tree just behind the building. So we uh, decided to move it forward 10 feet, which is still within the, uh, the allowable setback from the high water mark. <clears throat> Pardon me, high water mark. Um, Mr. McNeese's intention is to save as many, if not all of the existing trees around the building and specifically on the side of the building to uh, keep the protection from the, from the neighbors. Um, that's all I have to add at this time. Okay, thank you. And uh, Mr. Uh, McNeese, would you like to say something? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can, sir. 
I think I better say something or else I'm screwed. Um, my name is Eric McNeese, and I live at 45 Central Street in Etobicoke, uh, Marriott Victor 2R6. And um, I don't know where to start, but here's my presentation. Uh, thank you for your time today. I've been waiting for six months for this meeting, and I'm, I'm excited to get my new cottage built. My late mother and I bought the existing cottage over 31 years ago. The cottage was built in 1971 and needs to be replaced. It has been in disrepair for years, and I finally have most of the money to rebuild it. I'm asking for two variances today, 10% more lot coverage, relief from the side lot setback, and relief from the minimum 20 meter setback from the lake via the grandfathering clause. I'm asking for these variances simply because there are so many bylaws that factor into a new build that even if I asked for zero variances, I could not place a new 1,324 square foot cottage on my small property without having to turn it sideways and have it overlook the septic tank. Of course, I don't want that. My property is only 0.38 acres. And I think everyone would agree that is quite tiny compared to most Muskoka Lake properties. So when you're faced with 20 meters at the front of the property that one cannot build on and 15 foot side lot setbacks, as well as a septic tank and its setbacks, you're left with a narrow patch of property 12 meters wide from the 20 meter mark to the road and in my particular case. This represents only 22.5% of the total property of which most of that area is closer to the road than the lake. All of this does not even take into consideration the environment. I have approximately 65 trees on my property and one of the biggest trees, the 200 foot tall, 100 year old oak tree that sits at the 95 foot mark from the lake. That would put the new cottage build butting right up to that majestic oak tree. Without question, I would have to take down that tree before building the new college, cottage. Therefore, I am asking for a 60 and a half meter setback from the lake to save the oak tree. I think everyone would agree that the environment is of paramount importance when building a new cottage. That is why half of the bylaws are in place. The other half are for the peaceful harmony between neighbors. I'm sorry to add this at the last minute, but it's absolutely necessary. One variance I need relief from is the side yard setback because the septic bed is 32 feet wide and its septic setback is 16 feet plus two feet per foot of elevation. I need every inch I can get to be in compliance with that setback. Unfortunately, that means moving my new build closer to Nancy and Mike Watts property and tucking part of my new cottage behind trees and hindering my lake view. Again, I wish I didn't have to ask for a variance, but I do. I would much prefer to be in the center of my property with a full lake view from every room, so I am trying to obey all the rules as is, but I cannot. Finally, the building I am proposing to build is based on a prefab design, and to alter this design would be time consuming and costly. The 10% additional living space is necessary for a second bathroom and a utility room, so a hot water tank and pump can be housed inside the building year round instead of outside. After all is said and done, 1,377 square feet is not exactly a sprawling ranch. I hope with your help I can finally get this long overdue project started September 1st of this year. Now, if I have to ask, if I have to answer Nancy Watts, if I have to, do I answer Nancy Watts' uh, concerns now or later? Because I do, I do know I only have five minute presentation. That's okay. Go ahead. I'm not. Uh, I'm not holding you up. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, um, I, I'm really quite confused to why Nancy Watt is trying to hinder me from building a new cottage. I don't know if any members are familiar with Nancy Watt, but I know Neil Donald, the chief building official, is. She has registered an official complaint. Re my. Uh, we're not getting into that, sir. We're just talking, um, and that setbacks now. now. Okay, well, the, the two trees, that are the, the trees on the border, the boundary in figure five of the application are actually on my property. 
and they won't be effective. And there's very, there's tons of, there's three trees on my property that are at least a hundred years old. And I going to do my very, I, and, and I, I expect to not take one of them down. So for her to be concerned about killing the roots when digging the, the crawl space foundation is unwarranted and debatably fabricated. Um, Mike and Nancy Watt, uh, Oh, well, uh, and as far as Milan Kovac is concerned, she is correct. I do appear to be a irresponsible uh, cottage owner. However, I did have a, a, a marital breakdown in the last nine years. And as a result, I've only really visited the cottage one full year out of those last nine years. So I fully intend to be a the best the best cottage owner, three season cottage owner going because I'll have a brand new cottage to go to and look forward to. And my new girlfriend with me loves cottage life just like I do. But when they didn't have somebody to go up there with, what's the point? So hence, they are correct. I didn't cut my grass on a regular basis. But the four times that Miss Nancy and Mike Water complained about me, uh, about my derelict property, I have answered all four times, uh, basically happily. Um, okay, thank you very much, sir. Are there uh, any uh, questions from uh, the uh, committee? Yes, Member Creaser. Um, just with regards to the submission from Ms. Watt that uh, she, she stated that the original survey she was looking at showed a width that was less than 102. Is, uh, do staff have any comments on that through the chair? Uh, through you, Chair Edwards. It's our understanding based on correspondence that we received from the applicant's agent that the lot area that's been used for lot coverage purposes is based on the information that's been gained from the Municipal Property Assessment Corporation or MPAC. Uh, it hasn't been based on a, a survey. I would note that there, um, there is a registered plan of subdivision relating to the, uh, to the area and the, the property is identified as a lot on that registered plan of subdivision. Um, so the property has been surveyed in the past. Now, mind you, uh, um, that survey is, is quite old, um, but I wouldn't expect that it would be a, a huge issue to confirm the, the lot area through an updated survey. Um, so, you know, if, if that was a concern to committee, certainly uh, a condition could be required um, that a Ontario land surveyor confirm the, the lot area just to verify that in fact, the, uh, the coverage will be 8.8% um, based on on a uh, accurate uh, lot area. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sharp. I don't think you asked. Oh, is there anyone in opposition uh, to this application? No. Okay, no, uh, David, there isn't. Any other uh, questions from the uh, committee? Yes. My understanding is that you are grandfathered if you are building on the exact footprint. Um, and this building is not on the exact footprint, so there is, uh, in effect, no grandfathering. Um, my question, I guess, would be through the chair to the applicant or the applicant's agent, is why could it not be shifted six feet, eight feet uh, away from the uh, shoreline? I look on the, on the uh, site plan, it looks like there's 16 feet plus between uh, the edge of the new building and the septic bed. So it would seem to me that there is some space to move it. Would anyone like to, um, to answer that, why it can't be moved? Uh, Mr. Spears or, uh, I'm or Mr. McNeese? 
Oh, am I on? Oh, uh, yeah, you are. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, Mr. Uh, Bosmworth, um, you are a hundred percent correct in your analysis. I would love to not ask for the extra seven foot setback, but the, I'm so concerned about the septic tank bylaw rules that it, it appears that I have to force it. I have to force the new build towards Nancy and Mike Watts property. If you grant me approximately, uh, approximately 10 feet to 12 feet of, of lakefront um, setback, to approximately 53 feet from the lake and or 54 or 55 feet from the lake instead of 66 feet that move that moves the new build below the septic tank and it no longer it debatably would not affect the side lot setback the the area of the current cottage the site was cleared 49 years ago so most of that site is perfect, but because the new bylaws are in place, I have to adhere to those new bylaws to put the new build exactly where I can put it. If I can move it a little bit closer to the lake, then that, that, uh, that removes the conflict with the septic, the septic tank bylaws. And, I, and I, I know that there's no room for error or debate or variance when it comes to the septic tank bylaws. Therefore, we have to start there. We have to start there. So if I can move it south towards the lake a little bit, like 10 feet to save all the trees in question, because I can't move it, even if you said, well, you can put it on 48 feet, I can't do that because there's a huge pine at the 48 foot mark in the center of the property. So that's why all these little, little details have been taken into consideration. Trust me, I know my property 10 times better than Mike and Nancy Watt, even though they've been on it almost as much as myself. I hope that answers all queries because I'm, like I, like I said, I'd love to get this brand new cottage built so I can be the best Muskoka Lakes, proud Muskoka Lakes uh, um, cottage owner. Uh, Mr. Sharp, uh, can you uh, verify that? Uh, through you, Chair Edwards, uh, I can try to do my best um, to try to shed some light on this. Um, essentially, from my understanding and based on the site plans that have been submitted, um, the initial site plan that was submitted and that was circulated as part of the public notice indicated a setback of 66 feet from the high water mark. Um, Mr. McNeese and his agent, Mr. Spears, uh, then submitted a, a second site plan um, on August 7th, which you've included in your agenda package. It's indicating a, a setback of 56 feet, so a difference of, of 10 feet or 10 foot uh, reduction. Now that reduction still complies with the front yard setback. I think what I'm a little bit confused on is whether Mr. McNeese is indicating that he would need even a further reduced uh, front yard setback. So it might be helpful if he could just clarify that point and then maybe I'd have some additional comments after that. I could just jump in here. Um, my understanding is that the concern is the 20, looks like 16 feet between the edge of the proposed building and the edge of the septic system. It sounded to me like that was the constraint. If that could be reduced, then the building could. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm not sure exactly what the requirements are under the Ontario Building Code for, um, you know, setbacks from septic systems for building for buildings. Um, uh, perhaps uh, Mr. Pink or Mr. Allen could help me out in that regard. Um, so I'll, maybe I'll defer for, for their comments. Okay, Mr. Pink. Okay, Ryan. Yes. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, similar to Mr. Sharp, I am also um, not a building inspector. 
Um, but through my work uh, with the building inspectors, I understand that the setback is approximately 15 feet. We'd have to, we'd have to consult the building inspector to confirm the exact number. Um, but I've heard the 15 foot setback number um, come up frequently with my discussions with them. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> yes, Edwards, if I may just add uh, one further comment. Uh, it was my understanding based on Mr. McNeese's comments that he was wanting to reduce the front yard setback um, even further um, in order to allow uh, an in, uh, a lesser setback uh, between the proposed dwelling and the uh, septic system. Um, but I just wanted to clarify and confirm that point. Thank you. Uh, Mr. McNeese. Hi, I, I, um, you, you um, you're, I, I, I need 10 feet. I need 10 feet, please and thank you, because of that oak tree um, which is, if you see the pictures, it, that huge oak tree is the picture in figure six. That's the huge oak tree that I, I don't wish to touch under any circumstances. And if I move 10 feet from that, I can save the oak tree. Um, um, that's all. So I, I, need 10, I need 10 feet for sure. And... Okay, I, I need 10 feet for sure. I also want, oh, oh. Um, okay, well, I had, I had other reasons why I had, okay, all right, uh, I need 10 feet. I think Nancy Watts uh, complaints are, I have to, are invalid because it's, she would prefer to buy my property for 102,000 uh, instead of, instead of uh, and just complain about it. <sighs> um, so it, it looks like the setback is 16 feet, so the most you could move it would be one foot to stay within the Ontario Building Code. Uh, may I ask a question? Yes. The, the um, 16 feet is from the mantle. Um, not from the tank. Do we know if that 15 feet is from the bottom of the mantle or is it from the edge of the tank? From the yes, uh, Mr. Allen. Thank you. Uh, through you, uh, fo following uh, the answer that I recently gave, I had a chance to call uh, Neil Donald, the chief, the former chief building official, to request clarification regarding this question. Uh, so he's consulting the building code right now and is expecting to call me back any minute. Thank you very much. That will be helpful. I'd like to know, is it the setback from the, the uh, actual tile bed or the uh, tank? I'll let you know as soon as a response has been received. Thank you very much. Um, may, I, may I say something? Yes. Um, I did my best to do all my due diligence before I made this, you know, you know, this is just a, it's a huge part of my life to, to tear down a 31 year old cottage. Well, a cottage that I've, I've uh, had for 31 years and put a new cottage on. So I, I, I'm pretty sure that the setback for the septic tank is 16 feet, not, not from the septic tank, from the septic bed crest from the septic bread crest, 16 feet from there, plus two feet per foot of elevation above the grade. So I'm going to need like 16 to 20 feet from that, uh, 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 from that point. And therefore, um, therefore, that is the exact measurement. So if you add 32 feet for the septic bed size, plus 16 feet, for the, um, for the setback of the septic bed. Now we're at 48 feet, add on 15 feet for uh, the side lot setback on the other side. Now we're at 63 feet, add on a 45 foot cottage and we're at um, 108 feet. And I only got 102 feet to play with. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Actually, uh, the building inspector just walked in. 
could call back his number, but I don't have his number. <laughs> Five meters. The bed. The bed to the building. To the building. Five meters. Because <laughs> we've got right now, he's he's shown 16 feet from, from the bed. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, but come here and you can have a look at it, Neil. Yeah. Yeah, that's 16 oh, feet. Oh, yes. That's 16 feet. I was, that's what I was going to mention for our friends that um, don't use the metric system. Yeah. 16 feet. Thank you. So this is where he wants to put the house. He, he's, he's too close to the lot line. He wants to, we want to move it about seven feet there. That's 16 <laughs> feet. So that'd be uh, yeah. nine, nine feet. That, yeah, but the tile will be inside that. So we're okay. We're okay. So, so we can move it. Okay, so I, I have an answer. And the answer is that you can move that, that house over um, basically to 15 foot and you're still okay. And that's from the chief building inspector. Great, Thank you. great. Thank you. Thank you. So it stays at 66 feet from the, um, and, and that from the high water mark, 15 feet from the side lot line. And, uh, no, all you need it then. So all you would need is um, is eight point eight eight percent. Is that clear with the uh, committee? Yes. Yep. I think you said sixty six feet back. He's actually requesting fifty six. I said sixty six feet back. Yes, we require fifty six to save that big oak tree. Uh, and that, yes, Member Green. I think that maybe an arborist should be consulted because um, there's lots of ways of saving trees near building footprints, and it's quite astounding what your oak can take. Mm -hmm. uh, would committee like this deferred then, and they can check with an arborist to see. Because I know somebody that, that, that built right around the tree, so. Seems a reasonable proposal to me. I know it's, it's not what the applicant's going to want to hear, but. Yep. Yeah. I recommend Please. deferral because could we not get the survey straightened out by then, too? Yeah. Okay. Just met Neil. Neil's just clarifying. <laughs> setback shown from the subject system is what's required not shifted. so you can't shift it over there well, no. well that's what i just asked and you said like one to 16 feet and you said yeah well that's what the number says uh, 16 feet yeah so it so we can't, can't move sideways so it can't come closer to the okay no. okay now the building inspector is saying no it can't be moved over at 16 feet is <laughs> is it I have a comment that I think that this building is too wide and it needs to be redesigned. Um, I think that a, a septic bed to look at can actually, depending on how the perimeter is landscaped, can be quite nice to look at. And whether it's a setback from the septic at, at uh, 16 feet. Yes, Mr. Quinn, Member Quinn. You know, I, we have a building that's got a 8.2 setback and we talk about grandfathering and square footage. I'd be, I'd be happier if we were, if we were even meeting halfway and trying to fit a building in at uh, 10 feet setback or 11 feet setback. And because we are dealing with a lot more square footage going in there and I'd be, I'd be more supportive of that. Um, Um, any other uh, comments? Yes. Uh, I, I tend to agree with Member Quinn. I, I, this is almost a doubling of the footprint size, and I understand why someone would want close to 1,400 square feet if you're going to spend a lot of time there. Uh, but we are a fairly small lot, and it's constrained, and uh, and. Uh, eight feet is not very much distance to uh, your neighbor's line. 
Any other comments? Yes. I'll just add further, not only is it eight feet closer, but now they have 100% of the edge of the building is now at eight feet, whereas the previous mm -hmm. one just had one corner at eight feet and uh, the rest was, and it, it widened out to 16.3 feet or 16 feet three inches. So it is in fact more intruding on a neighbor's space. So I'm sympathetic to the neighbor. Um, May I say a word? Yes. Um, I just want to say that we've been working on this design for quite some time and it meets Mr. McNeese's, all of Mr. McNeese's requirements. Um, to change it now would um, be somewhat costly and would delay the, the project. The other thing is right now to get a surveyor in, we're a minimum of five weeks to get a land surveyor to site. Um, Mr. McNeese was hoping to start this summer, but because of obviously because of COVID, it's been delayed under no one's control. Um, so he's really quite anxious to get the construction started this fall. And I think all of his neighbors agree that, or would agree that once this construction is done, it'll be much more sightly for them. And I am quite certain that Mr. McNeese will maintain the property having a new dwelling. Um, so I think I'd like to see if there's some sort of a compromise we can come to, but I don't think taking six or eight feet off the width of the building, um, will be in his best interest. It would be if, uh, if, it's, if it's refused. I'm sorry? I said it would be if it's refused. So I don't know if you want to um, uh, ask for a uh, deferment on this. Uh, you can get it uh, uh, deferred and uh, bring it back um, and see what you can work out if you want to get it surveyed, Matt. Uh, yes, Member Queen. Um, I think putting the whole building, if, if we can find a compromise, I think in this situation to ask for the 15 foot when there is some grandfathering at 8.2, if we can if we can get out to 10 or 11, I would support this today. But I'm I'm not going to support it at 8.2 feet. Are you saying 11 feet from the side yard setback? I would support that. <laughs> Mr. McNeese, your thoughts? I think I have I think I have the absolute best answer. I agree with Mr. Quinn. I would love to move it 11 feet, but I'm just so worried about having that top left-hand corner of the new build closer to the uh, septic bed, which we can't have. I need a new septic tank, so that's going to be no problem. I'm going to move the septic tank closer to the left or left side of the property. Got no problems with that. How about this? If, we, if you gave me a 52 foot setback from the lake, a 52 foot uh, setback from the lake, I can move the whole cottage over three feet and I know that the top left corner of my cottage would not interfere with that septic bed bylaw setback. So I know it would work then if you could grant me 50, one, if you can grant me 51 feet, I, have, I might even be able to push it all the way over to 15 feet because the top part of the, of the build will not interfere with the septic bylaws. If we could compromise on that, I will say 11 feet from the, from the side bed would be great. That will save all Nancy Watts trees that are on my property. And, um, and uh, it, I, can, I can save the oak tree at the same time and I don't have to worry about the bylaw. So that would be perfect if you guys would agree with that and I would go away super happy. Uh, I don't want to grant that at this, at, at, at this point without it uh, being surveyed and, and Mark, uh, yes, uh, Member Green. I, I was just going to say that, you know, at this point we're moving this thing around. <laughs> I'm finding it a, a somewhat confusing, but I'm also thinking that, is it fair to the neighbors who have taken the time to respond to not have an opportunity to respond to the building now being closer to the lake. I don't, I'm not sure we can take 
uh, Mr. McNeese's, uh, you know, opinion on what they're going to think about that and whether or not it obstructs their views. So personally, I think that this should be deferred because I think there's a lot of unknowns and I, I, I would be concerned about what I'm agreeing to or not agreeing to at this stage. Uh, yes, Mr. Bombsworth. I would say, though, in concept, uh, I would suggest uh, moving it forward, maintaining the footprint size, uh, but moving it forward over as suggested, and that could be guidelines to Mr. McNeese so that he would not pay. So his turnaround on resubmitting it could be fairly quick. Anyone else? So so are you proposing we, we do another site plan? I think that would be wise, sir. If it was me, I would ask for a uh, deferral. Would that mean being deferred till the next uh, minor variance hearing? Uh, I'll ask uh, and that Mr. Pink on that. Too. We could fit it in the next uh, meeting. It will depend on the timelines of the applicant, how quickly they can provide us provided information. Well, I, I think that would be a great idea. I have no problems with your suggestion, Mr. Bosomworth. Um, if we could get into the next meeting, that would be great because I'd still like to sneak, sneak uh, getting this building up before this year as, uh, as needless to say, because of COVID, I've, I've wasted the whole year. I think that would be a great idea and I think, I can, I, I think we can do it. Uh, yes, Member Quinn. Um, I, you know what, I don't know if it's fair to uh, ask Bryce or go to staff about this, but if, if we're talking about putting a building at potentially 56 feet, he's been there and would he, would, would staff uh, be recommending this or is it unfair to ask at this time? Yes. So through you, Chair Edwards, um, I visited the property and if we're, the building can be built at 50 feet, that would be the bylaw requirement. If we're moving it that far forward, um, a bunch of trees will be removed in the process. At 56 feet, we may be able to preserve many of the trees in front of the property. Um, however, they would be extremely close. There's several large trees at the front of the existing deck at the moment. So moving it any closer would mean those trees would be removed. <clears throat> Well, I have had somebody ask for a, uh, a, a deferral and that, uh, what does the rest of the uh, committee want to do? Because uh, I don't like just moving lines here and there without uh, knowing it should be staked out and then uh, the planning department can check it out again. Any comments on that? We could potentially get all the paperwork turned around um, and back into you I would like to say early next week. Well, that's yes, Member Quinn. Um, you know, even if it was a combination of variants, like if we're moving further out from 8.2, if it was something that fit in at 11, 12 feet, and we we're only doing a variance to go forward at uh, you know 58 or 60 feet rather than a setback of 66, um, I'd like you to to work with your trees and see, see what you can bring us back. Okay. And I would, I would check to make sure that that survey is the, the correct one if somebody else has a different one. But uh, so we will um, uh, adjourn this then. Uh, it's the first of the next meeting if you can get your, uh, your ducks in a row. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much for your time, boys, everybody. Thank you. And the next application <coughs> excuse me, is A1220.
and the planner can take that one. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance option A-12 slash 20 in the name of Petrovic. The property is known municipally as 1134 and 1124 Stephen Road. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plans beginning on page 95 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The purpose and effect of the application is that the applicants proposed to demolish an existing dwelling and construct a new dwelling. In 1995, bylaw 1995-54 was passed by council to impose an increased front yard setback of 100 feet from the top of bank slash slope over a portion of the property. The proposed dwelling is to be constructed 50 feet from the high water mark. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 11 days in advance and two submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by Neil Donald, the township's chief building official, and Mr. Donald has no Ontario Building Code objections. The second submission is by Ken Becking, the township's director of public works, and Mr. Becking has no objections. I have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration. The subject property formerly consisted of two lots, which have now merged to form a singular property. Relief is required from bylaw 1995-54, which is a site-specific bylaw that was intended to apply to only one of the two lots that currently comprise the subject property. The proposed dwelling is fully compliant with the township's comprehensive zoning bylaw and avoids areas of steep terrain on the property. If committee is considering approval of the application, staff have recommended that a site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for plantings and retention of existing vegetation. Staff otherwise have no objections to the application. I have no further comments at this time and I would be happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sharp. Is the applicant, applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? Okay. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of committee. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, hi there, this is Graham Heisinger of Wayne Simpson and Associates, uh, 76 King William Street, Huntsville, E1H1E4. I'm acting as the agent on behalf of Peter Petrovich, the property owner. Um, I think Bryce did a great job of uh, explaining the, uh, the planning uh, situation and the history on the, the subject lands and uh, the fact that it used to be two properties. There was a site specific zoning bylaw placed on the western of the property. Uh, having to do with a steep slope um, or a, a, a top of slope identified on that property uh, with the intention of protecting the integrity of that slope. There was a hundred foot building setback imposed from the top of that slope um, with the intention that if there was a house put on the property closer to Stephen Road to the north of the property um, that it would be well back from the top of the slope and would not compromise the integrity of the slope. Uh, obviously that bylaw didn't contemplate um, the property merging with the other property to the east and now we have an existing um, developed property which uh, Mr. Petrovich owns uh, that will be redeveloped um, using the existing driveway and in the existing area of the cottage that's on that eastern property. So this is essentially just a, a technicality to, um, to allow a small portion of the new house uh, to encroach over what used to be the lot line and what is now the boundary between the ordinary zoning and this, um, this uh, special zoning that was put in place in 1995. So uh, again, I think Bryce did a great job explaining it in the report, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support of this application? It looks like we have uh, Louisa and Kevin O'Toole. Okay. Okay, and see if it's support or uh, opposition. Hello. Hello. Here we go. Um, the I'm, I'm sorry, all of a sudden I got undone. My name is Kenitha Ohini. I represent my father right now, who is Ken Kosh. And um, I might have just interrupted whatever you're talking about, so please correct me. Um, uh -huh. We're in. 
Yeah. Yeah, we're not as much in opposition. My parents have owned, owned their cottage, which is on Silver Lake. It's um, their 26, um, uh, their address is 26 Silver Lake Lane for over 50 years. And so on behalf of them, I'm making two comments. One is um, the slope that is discussed is really, really, really strong and needs to be paid attention to. The second thing my parents are concerned about is the fact that it's a very small lake. And this sounds like it's going to become a monster cottage. And we, we had our own little Silver Lake group that generally restricted the number of motorboats and all those things. So um, my, my parents are a little concerned about the size of the cottage that wants to be built for such a small lake. And it's in a cove, um, uh, which is probably why there is such a big slope. So the 100 foot backing up thing that you have been speaking of, I'm sorry, <laughs> poorly said. Um, my parents would love to see. It doesn't directly affect them. It's just that they've been cottage owners for a long time and they see this as, excuse the pun, a slippery slope of people wanting to be closer to the lake with great big cottages. Thank you. Okay, now are you aware that it's two lots and they've merged into one, so it's going to be one cottage instead of two? Yeah, that's the whole point. It's two properties merged into one, which could be a great big wonderful monster cottage on a small lake. Well, well, the thing is, is if, if uh, some people have rights on on that, if you look at the um, at, at the drawing on, uh, I don't know if you have it there with you, on page eighty nine, but it just comes over just a sliver on on onto the one lot. As long the, as I believe the ridges. Okay, as long as it uh, doesn't affect the that the great big slope, and it, we're just. Uh, as I say, I'm representing my parents who are just concerned about the state of, of the degree of that slope and just being careful about that. The, the bylaw was put in or the rule was put in, a hundred foot rule was put in for a reason and that slope um, hasn't changed. <laughs> no, but if, if I, I'm looking at the, at, at the, the sketch here, the hundred foot um, setback from, from top of bank, if you had a cottage up there, it would really uh, show up. And um, like I say, the slope looks like it, it narrows down towards the, uh, the the lot that they're building on. And that maybe the uh, planner could um, uh, explain it better than I can. Yeah, I'm happy to chime in uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, so as you mentioned, it's it's going to be a, a quite a large property given the average size of properties on Silver Lake. So yes, it will be a larger cottage than what's there now, but it's gonna be a very large property that it's situated on. And again, you won't have that other cottage being developed uh, up on the top of the slope there. Uh, the 100 foot top of bank setback was put in place um, to restrict the development location on that Western lot when it was its own lot um, with the intention that the house would be 100 feet to the north of that top of bank. Um, this little part of the uh, proposed house that's going to be uh, in that zone uh, it was it was never contemplated to restrict um, a, de a, de a dwelling that's going to be put in way to the south of where that top of bank is because obviously that wouldn't impact the stability of the top of the slope. So uh, the the dwelling will will comply with all the other uh, zone provisions and uh, as Bryce noted we're going to be doing a site plan agreement make sure that we have uh, vegetation in place in accordance with the township's bylaw uh, make sure that we revegetate any areas uh, such as the footprint of the um, existing dwelling that's going to be removed um, to make sure that we're in accordance with the bylaw. So it, uh, all in all, we're, we're trying to work around uh, the provisions of the bylaw. We just need this one technical um, variance to permit it to happen. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions from the members? Yes, Mr. Rosenberg. Uh, just curious as to this, uh, whether this building will require any blasting. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I'm not entirely sure what the building plan is. I've only seen conceptual development plans. Um, it may, but uh, I, I couldn't comment for certain. And, and will it be in a good relationship to the septic system? It's a little lake. Uh, again, through you, Mr. Chair, the comments received from the township's building department indicated there were no concerns, and that would include concerns with the septic system. So uh, I, I don't think we're going to have a, a problem with accommodating the existing capacity on the septic system. 
Are there any other questions or comments from the committee? Can you mail the address? Oh, um, pardon? Need their mailing address. Yeah, uh, actually, we, we need your, your mailing addresses, please, so that we can send out uh, the uh, decision. Um, are you speaking to me? I'm sorry. Yeah, that, that would be one. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Do you just want me to give it to you now? <laughs> yes, that would be good. Okay. Um, it's going to go to my parents as they're the owners. Okay. All right. Um, so they're not. Mr. and Mrs. and their last name is K-O-C-H. Apartment 107, 186 Stephen with a P-H, Drive, Toronto. Mary 8Y3 Nancy 6. And did you want to send a copy to us as well? Uh, no. Okay. Well, just to your parents, that's fine. Okay, thank you. And I guess we, we should have the address of the agent too. And certainly, that's uh, Unit 3, 76 King William Street, Huntsville, Ontario, P1H1E4. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from the, uh, the members? Moved by Member Creaser, second by Member Green, be it resolved that application A1220 Petrovic to permit the construction of a new dwelling 50 feet from the high water mark within 100 feet of the top of bank as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision is hereby approved subject to the following. One, that a site plan be entered into along with securities for plantings and retentions of the existing visitation. This agreement is to be registered on title. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? That is carried. Thank you very much. And can I have some reasons, please? It's an improvement on the existing cottage siding. Right. Okay. <coughs> and the uh, next application is A1320. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A-13-20 in the name of tipping. The subject property is known municipally as 1009 Christie Point Road. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 111 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicant proposes to construct a new single story boathouse. The proposed boathouse will result in 11% lot coverage within 200 feet of the high water mark. The permitted coverage within 200 feet from the high water mark is 10%. The variance requested is 1% or 259 square feet. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 11 days in advance and four submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by Neil Donald, the Township's Chief Building Official, the Development Services Department has Ontario Building Code objections. The second is submission is by Kem Becking, the Township's Director of Public Works. The Public Works Department has no objections. The third submission is by Wayne Gibson, an immediate neighboring property owner to the north. The submission is as follows. Bear with me, it's a little bit long, but I think it's important I read it all. So the first submission was made on August 7th, 2020. The minor variance application by James William Tipping to seek a minor variance to allow for an increase in the maximum permitted coverage of buildings on his lot noted above has provided an opportunity for neighbors and neighboring property owners to object based on the four minor tests that must be fulfilled for a minor variance and to object based on the provincial policy statement under the Planning Act. One, is the variance minor? This variance is not minor. This consideration is resolved by determining the extent of the impact on neighboring properties, including considerations for space and access. 
This is an insensitive development. It is proposed, it is a proposed obstruction to the safety of the abutting property to the north, Gibson property, with an unacceptable adverse impact. The orientation of the boat slip entries has left only 32 feet for maneuvering a boat of potentially 24 feet in length, which will mean that the, each entry and exit from the boat slips will encroach on the waterfront of the property to the north and will probably and the probability of endangering those swimming and enjoying the waterfront of the Gibson property. Nowhere does the application show the proximity of the building pro project in the existing dock, which has been in this location for over 50 years. The, on the neighboring property, most impacted by the orientation of the boat slips. Two, is this development that, is this a development that is desirable for the appropriate use on, of the applicant's land? There is no compelling reason for this development. No need has been shown for the increase of the permitted coverage. The increase in density and impact on abutting owners is not warranted. Although the orientation of the boat slips is a probable danger to the residents at the Gibson property to the north, it would seem that the desire to add a boathouse can be met by staying within the current bylaw requirements. Therefore, there is no need for an increase in the maximum permitted coverage. Three, does the variance requested maintain the general intent and purpose of the bylaw? A design should retain the intended characteristics, which also take into consideration the use of the development. This particular design, including the boat slip size and the orientation, make it a danger to the property, to the neighbors to the north, with only 32 foot setback. The increase in density makes the development a danger to the abutting property to the north. Four, does the variance requested maintain the general intent and purpose of the official plan? Protecting public health and safety is an overall planning concern in the official plan and as part of the provincial planning statement. The goal of, the pl the goal of planning is to enhance the quality of life for all Ontarians and to support the collective well-being. All lands must be well managed. Article B. 5.14b of the official plan allows for ingress, in, ingress and egress of boats to dock spaces and the boathouse slips while maintaining reasonable views and separation for privacy between neighboring properties. Article 8.11 states that location and orientation of shoreline structure should be situated to minimize congestion on the water body. The application is not minor in nature and has serious adverse impact on the neighboring properties to the north. There is no compelling need to grant an access increase in maximum permitted coverage to the applicant. The applicant's need for a boathouse can be met within the prescribed limits of the zoning bylaw without the need for a minor variance. It is unfortunate that the Township of Muskoka Lakes allowed this development to proceed without taking into consideration the impact on the neighboring properties, including safety issues with the boat slip orientation, which will have their boats directly encroaching on the front of the neighboring properties to the north when making in grass and egress. The application shows 76 feet of property frontage to the south, which would have allowed for a safer ingress and egress of their boats. If the applicant had built this project and it compiled with zone, and complied with zoning requirements, we would not be here today, although the danger of the boat slip orientation remains. The applicant has chosen to build the project which exceeds municipal permitted coverage there is no demonstrated need for, significant, for a significant increase in density. For those reasons, this application should, for minor variance should be denied. Respectfully submitted, uh, Wayne Gibson, Kathy Gibson, Toby Gibson, and Laura Gibson. This submission was then followed up on August 9th, 2020. Uh, since the agenda and staff report on this matter were not available to the adjacent property owners until noon on Friday, August 7th, 2020, I would like to have the opportunity to add our comments, which were forwarded to the planning department on August 7th, 2020, by hand and email. We are immediately adjacent to the north of the tipping property. The lake bed is crown land belonging to all of us. It is an extraordinary privilege that we have been given the opportunity to occupy, occupy the lake bed for our private use. However, we must respect the official plan, bylaws, and zoning regulations established to protect these natural assets if we are to continue to enjoy them in the future. I refer to policy experts from the township official ex excerpts from the township of official plan, which will not be satisfied by this application. Official plan B 
B.4.2 to ensure the built form does not become concentrated or dominant on the waterfront to the detriment of natural form. Official plan B.4.18 to control development on the waterfront such as it does not dominate the natural shoreline. Please see photos two, three, and four attached to the staff report. The dock has been recently constructed and is massive. The owners have taken advantage of an interpretation of the definition of frontage in the bylaw to show the frontage at 164 feet. However, the submitted plan shows the frontage between the straight line lot extensions at 134.9 feet frontage, not, 130, not 164 feet. This frontage will only allow a boathouse width of 21.58 feet, not 26.2 feet requested, and a dock width of 33.725 feet, not the 41 feet that was recently built. Both of these structures would be over the 11% maximum minor variance allowed. I do not believe this application is an appropriate or desire, desirable development. These structures do not preserve the natural character of the shoreline and dominate the natural rock shoreline. The official plan B.5.14B B, in the case of shoreline structures to allow for the ingress and egress of boats to dock spaces and boat slips while maintaining reasonable views and separation for privacy between neighboring properties and official plan B.8.11, the location and orientation of shoreline structures should be situated to minimize congestion on the water body. The orientation of the boathouse slips presents major navigation, congestion, and safety issues. The slips are oriented towards our dock and swimming area, which is not shown on the submitted slight plan. With only a 30 foot setback, this does not allow boats to safely enter and exit the slips without encroaching on the extended property line and our waterfront. With these comments and our comments submitted August 7, 2020, I do not believe the Committee of Adjustment should approve this application. Wayne Gibson. All right. There is a fourth submission by Ian Clark, a nearby property owner. The submission is as follows. I have read and concurred with the uh, arguments and objections to the tipping minor variance submitted by the Gibson family and Mr. Robert Silcox on August 7th, 2020. I agree that this application for a minor variance should be denied, respectfully submitted, Ian Clark. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no objections. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, is the applicant or applicant's agent uh, here wishing to speak? Yes, the agent's here. Jason Smith. Okay. Can everybody hear me? Sorry. Uh, yes, uh, we need your, your, your name and address and postal code, Jason, please. Jason Sift, uh, Hunt Road, POC 1HO, Mac Deer. Okay. Uh, hello, committee members. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I think the planning department has done a great job laying out the details <clears> of this request. Um, I think just based on um, the notes from Mr. Gibson, um, I'd like to address some of those kind of first, just while they're fresh in our mind. Um, I can understand that he's not happy with this variance um, and that he doesn't like the location of, of the slips. That's his main, um, seems to be his main concern. I'd like to note if you can look at figure three, uh, which is a photo from his dock, his boat slips actually also face that dock's boat slips. So if he's swimming where he parks his boats, I'd be surprised, but also, um, it could be understood that we couldn't put the swimming area on that side of the dock because that's where he was, that's where we would have then have to swim where he was trying to park his boats. Um, we are 32 feet from the lot line. The rule is 30, so we are a little bit more than, than necessary. Um, but also, if you can look at that picture, figure three, um, you can see the distance between the two docks is actually quite large. Um, we're 32 feet. I'd say his dock is, is probably a little bit more than that off. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but, but he is a little bit away as well. Um, so that just to address a few of his um, concerns. Also, the increase in coverage is not to create 
uh, a third slip or any more slips than are already there. It's to create a 10 foot area on the front of the boathouse. If you look inside the boathouse, there's not really any room to, to have any storage whatsoever. Um, this allows us to have just a little bit of room to, you know, put skis, tubes, those kinds of things. Um, and, and that's really the, the goal of the area, which is why there's, there's, um, yeah. Um, even if, you know, even if this variance was granted, um, it actually further solidifies the fact that we can't put a third slip in because the, the roof line would have to go there. Um, so where you see the steel structure right now, that's to the, that's where the portion will end that uh, we can't even quite build that far. Um, we have to actually go back right in line with the first slip um, if it was not granted. So, sorry. Um, okay, but at the same thank time, you. Pardon? Thank you. No, no I'm not uh, done yet. Sure. Okay. Sure. Sorry. Um, I'd also like to note that, that Mr. Gibson is really the only neighbor that is affected by this. The other neighbor, I believe, is, is one from further up the shore. Um, so to kind of now curb back to why we need this variance, um, that's just to further. Um, Christie Point Road is a very unique road as a, it's small, approximately 15 foot back road um, that happens to be owned by the township, meaning that the property's waterfront coverage area is greatly reduced from the normal first 200 foot area to where the start of the right of way is. The applicant does own the land on both sides of the right of way, but that portion of the right of way has to be removed from coverage. Um, what that's created is that basically what a property that would, our request is actually only, if, if that was not a, a town owned right of way, our request would be less than 8%. Um, but in, in, because of that right of way, that is why we need to request um, the extra coverage. If you can turn to the figure that has the site plan, um, it was in the very last page. I think that, that graphically shows it quite well. Um, you can see behind the behind Christie Point Road, there's a 200, the 200 foot shoreline setback is back there. We actually can't use any space behind that that right of way. All the only land we're allowed to use for coverage is in front of that right of way. Um, greatly reducing the amount of coverage we can have. It's quite a large lot, but you can see that 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 whole right of way is actually pulled out of our coverage area. Um, so. If Christie Point was a more normal right of way that is over the property owner's land, um, we would not be sitting here today and we could build quite a bit larger boathouse. Um, another thing I'd just like to quickly comment on, um, Mr. Gibson talked about the, the calculation for, for straight line frontage and the size of the dock and the boathouse. I'm not sure if the planners could comment on that to tell us that we, you know, I, I know we are inside um, we, we've done that calculation correctly um, and the township issued a building permit for the dock to, to be able to do this. Um, at the time of building this dock, um, and obviously we have to apply for the dock permit first, we applied for the dock permit. Um, at time of applying for our final is when we actually found out about the issue of Christie Point Road. Um, the dock probably in hindsight would have been built smaller um, and maybe rearranged the slips, but because we didn't know that, um, rule at the time, we, 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 we thought we were, you know, doing what we could do. Um, and the dock is 100% is accurate, um, but we probably would have made it smaller in hindsight if we had have known the boathouse couldn't be as long. Um, the other issue, from an aesthetic side, the boathouse will look quite square um, and short if we cannot get the 10-foot um, extension. Thank you for your time. I'm here to answer any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, would the owner like to, to say something? I don't think that's the owner. That's not the owner. Okay. Okay. Okay, Mr. Tipping. Hello, Mr. Chipping, can you hear me? Jesse, you got to unmute it.
She's still there, Jane. Yeah, she's still there. I've asked her. Mr. Chipping, can you unmute? He's gone. He's gone. Okay. Yeah. It looks like there may be a Wayne Gibson. Yes. Is that, is it? Is that a different application now? No. Okay. Yeah. Is there someone there who would like to speak in support of this application? Or is there anyone there who would like to speak in opposition to this application? Anyone would like to speak on this application? Hello, it's Wayne Gibson calling. Can you hear me? Yes, we can now, sir. Okay, I, need I don't your, see you. I need your full name and address and postal code. Wayne Gibson, 1025 Christie Point Road, RR1, McTeer, POC 1HO. Thank you. Okay. Okay, um, I am the uh, neighbor and my family immediately north of the tipping property, which is uh, impacted uh, most by this uh, boathouse. Um, we were very concerned when the dock construction started and I went to speak to the building department to ask if there was a permit issued because there was nothing posted. Um, when I was in the building department, the um, survey was uh, shown as Christie Point Road being a right of way. And I knew this was not true. I knew that it was a township road. I don't understand how a surveyor could prepare a survey and not show the correct information. So this is something that should have been available to the tippings when they initially applied for the permit for the boathouse. Um, the lot coverage uh, should have been known six months ago before they started uh, constructing the uh, dock and subsequently the boathouse. So, you know, in that instance, I don't understand why they didn't uh, get that information or how they were not aware of that information. Uh, secondly, the orientation of the boat slips, which is part of the boat house itself, um, you know, is, is a concern to us as, no, as noted in my submission. Um, you know, we don't uh, or swim where the boat is uh, navigating. We swim in front of the dock, but in order to get in and out of the slips, you need to go into that area. And 30 feet or 32 feet is not an adequate distance to allow a boat to access the slip, especially if you've got like a 24 foot boat, that's not enough room. So they're going to be encroaching on our 100 foot uh, extension or the property line extension into the water to do that. And uh, the same as, uh, you know, we may do that as well for accessing our, our slips. So, you know, it's an unsafe situation. Uh, it would have been much better if the uh, slips had been located on the other side to the, uh, to the south. So, uh, you know, the arguments that we made in the uh, submission concerning the uh, uh, planning are, you know, the basis of our objection. Any questions? I'd be happy to answer them. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and I think we have somebody else would like to speak. So, uh, Pardon? Yes. Are we My need name to. Is... You're fading out there. We need your full name, uh, mailing address, please.
mute, sorry. D-A-N-A-D-Y-M-E-N-T. My address is 2495 Davis Drive West, Kettleby, Ontario, L7B0G5. Now, um, we have a neighbor, Jill Reeves, who wrote a letter and she emailed it yesterday, but apparently it wasn't read as an objection. So I would like to read that now, if I may, please. Yes, you may. Okay. As residents, Reeves family of 1063, number three, Christie Point Road, we would like to support the objections of this application made by the neighboring Gibson family at 1025 Christie Point Road and the Silcox family at 1037 Christie Point Road. In consideration of the fact that the agenda and staff report on this application were not available to neighboring properties until Friday, August 7th at 12 noon, and the hearing is August 10th at 9 a.m., we are hoping that these viewpoints will be heard. This development not only infringes on the Gibson family's enjoyment of their docks and waterfront, but the orientation of the slips poses a significant danger to their safety in and around their dock and swimming space. The initial docks that are now already built should never, in our opinion, have been built so far out from the shore at 66 feet and into the bay at the very narrowest point, 500 feet in the bay. This also poses a risk to boaters at large. We are hoping for vigilance on the part of our planning department to preserve the integrity of our waterfront submitted by Real Richard and Jill Reeves, MacTier, Ontario, P0C1H0. The only other thing I'd like to add to this is when you look at the four tests for a minor variance, there is no compelling reason to exceed the 10% density requirement. Their two-slip dock house could be built in a different way to achieve their results, but it is not right to just say, no, well, just changing it by 1%. It is not. You have set maximum permitted coverage at 10% for a reason. You have provincial planning policy. You have your official plan, which you need to recognize. <coughs> well, that's it for me. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else there, uh, Jane, or uh, everyone? It's everyone? That is everyone. Okay, do we have uh, and that questions from the members? Any questions from the members, anybody? Just a comment. Yes, okay. Um, it's unfortunate that the neighbors are debate, debating the orientation of the, of the slips because that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about whether we can, should allow them to build roof over those slips um, and that's unfortunate particularly for the neighbors because I think uh, from a planning point of view or an application point of view they're just too late to deal with that so we're just dealing with the extra square footage that we, needs to be counted because of the boathouse uh, and the only suggestion I have on that is that uh, uh, when it's not going to address any safety issues but it, it, the size could be reduced by five feet so that they, that 10 by 26 area on the water side of the boathouse could be reduced somewhat. But you still need space. They're allowed to use uh, boathouses for uh, boat storage and swimming. And 10 by 26 area is not overly large and probably will not become a huge entertainment area. Okay, thank you. Any other uh, questions or comments? Yes. Um, I, first of all, I just want to get a comment from the planners as to whether what Rob just said is correct um, with respect to deciding on maximum coverage versus the safety of, and orientation of these slips. Yes, Mr. Uh, for Sharp. For you, Chair Edwards. Uh, that is correct. Essentially, the variance that's in front of committee and what you're considering is a coverage request and not um, the orientation of the boat slips. Um, I would just note that in regard to the side yard setback, as we know and as, have been, as, a, as has been stated, that the, uh, the dock and the boathouse are compliant. 
in regard to the uh, the setbacks from the side lot line. So what's before you and what you're considering is the lot coverage request. Any other uh, questions or comments? Moved by member Quinn, second by member Bottomsworth. Be it resolved that application A1320 tipping to permit the construction of a boathouse, which will result in the lot coverage on the entire lot to be 2,851 square feet or 11%. As shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision, is hereby approved. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. Okay, and anyone opposed? Okay, and that is carried. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, excuse me, we tried to um, make some additional comments before the uh, resolution was read and uh, uh, we were not Actually, allowed. sir, uh, once it goes to what committee, if this had been an open meeting here, it wouldn't have been allowed to even comment on that. So once it goes to what uh, committee, they, they make that decision. Just so that you, you are aware. Okay. Uh, and, do we have any? Uh, yes. I just want to make a comment about the notice period. I mean, this is not the first time today that we've heard that the neighbors are not finding out until about three days before the meeting. How does this happen? I mean, I, I really think that this is a, a growing issue that we're having on the committee where we find out that a neighbor may have only received the notice a couple of days before the meeting. And I think that's a concern. And just as a general comment, I'm really concerned about people uh, taking advantage of, of uh, the existing bylaws and putting uh, boathouses and, and the entrance to their boathouses along the shoreline. The, the whole point of protecting our shorelines it has a lot to do with fish habitat. And it seems to me that we're taking advantage of the length of docks uh, and and turning docks into sun docks as opposed to just opportunities for swimming. And I, I really think, I, I hope that this gets addressed in the official plan. Can you okay, thank you. Yes, Member Creature. Uh, my understanding was the, was the notice, they said they didn't get, it wasn't the notice that they didn't get, it was the planning report that they got on Friday, which is actually pretty standard committee of adjustment practice is that the planning report comes out sometimes the day of the meeting or potentially the day before. So I think that's what she was complaining about, not right. notice, although I think it would be a prudent to notice. Okay, thank you. And we need reasons. Anybody? I think it meets the four criteria of right. passing a minor bylaw, a minor very. Okay. And uh, the, we are uh, the, the shape of the lot makes it so that they need extra coverage. Yeah. And at this time, because we've been at it for, for two hours, we're going to take a 10 minute comfort break. And uh, we'll be, uh, so let's say, 11 o'clock, so 10 after 11. Thank you. Uh, I think, and that change just, just puts it up that it's on uh, reset. I'm not going to 
Um, our spreadsheet that wants to see for this next application, but I don't see it in here. Okay. So we'll see. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'd like to get the meeting uh, called back to order. And uh, the next application is A142011. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A-14-20 in the name of Levin. The subject property is known municipally as 1470 Acton Island Road. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 126 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicant proposes to construct a new boathouse. The proposed boathouse will, will result in 11% lot coverage within 200 feet of the high water mark. The permitted coverage within 200 feet of the high water mark is 10%. The variance requested is 1% or 447 square feet. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 11 days in advance and five submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by Neil Donald, the township's chief building official. The Development Services Department has no Ontario Building Code objections. The second submission is by Kem Becking, the township's director of public works. The public works department has no objections. The third submission is from Maureen and Jim Pierce, neighboring property owners. The letter is as follows. I was over yesterday and had a look. We support your request for the variance of 1%, Maureen and Jim Pierce. The fourth submission is from Eric McTiver, the neighboring property owner. The letter is as follows. <coughs> Having reviewed the plans for your new boathouse, including the very minor variance related to the roof area, I am supportive of it being completed as currently designed. Regards, Eric. The sixth and last submission is from John Pearson, a neighboring property owner. The letter is as follows. I understand your new boathouse requires a variance since your lot coverage is 11% or 1% greater than the 10% permitted. I also understand the township is including your woodsheds in their calculations of lot coverage. As a neighbor, I am not opposed to this variance and please feel free to forward this email to the township. If they have any questions, they can contact me by email or phone. Regards, John. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no objections. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? I don't see anybody. Nobody in? in the queue? Oh, Sorry. Yes. Sorry, we got an email from the agent. Uh, yeah. He's been unable to connect due to Wi-Fi, so he sent me an email um, just to read, sharing his thoughts, if that's all right. Okay. So if there's any, um, he, he uh, couldn't phone in then at the time. Yeah, he's having trouble. We sent him all the login information, but he's having trouble logging in at the moment. <laughs> I can sympathize with him. I've had yeah. myself at times. <laughs> All right, so he says, good morning, everyone. My name is Mark Ritchie with Muskoka Custom Cottages, and we are acting agent for the owners of 1470 North Acton Island Road. I have tried a number of times to connect with the meeting this morning, but due to internet issues have not been successful. Therefore, I wanna thank you all via email, if possible, for your time and listening to our request. We propose to construct a single story boathouse with a request for 1% lot coverage increase, other than the requested increase all other required by law matters such as setbacks and height. As noted in the report, there have not been any public submissions received to date. We have actually forwarded a number of emails to planning from nearly from nearby neighbors to all in agreement to the owner's proposed boathouse moving forward. These have been received by Ryan Allen as per his confirmations. I accept your time and approval of this proposal is appreciated. Thank you, Mark Ritchie. Okay, thank you very much. And just for the uh, formality, is there anyone here wishing to speak in support of this application? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application? Are there questions from the members? Clean up. Moved by Member Bosnsworth, seconded by Member Quinn, be it resolved that application A142011 to permit the construction of a one story boat house, which will result in a lot coverage of 5,250 square feet or 11% of the lot area within the 200 feet of the high water mark. 
as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision, is hereby approved. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. And that's carried. And the reasons. Member, uh, neighbor support. Right. Okay, and the next application is A1620. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A-16-20 in the name of Oki and Oniuti. The subject property is known municipally as SR400 Lost Channel, Severn River, Unit 7. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 144 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicant proposes to construct a dock, both port and bed. The proposed dock will be 32 feet in width. The maximum cumulative width permitted is 22.1 feet. A 9.9 .9 foot variance is being requested. The proposed boat port will be 32 feet in width. The maximum cumulative width permitted is 17.6 feet. The requested variance is 14.4 feet. The proposed shed will be set back 3.3 feet from the interior side yard. The required side yard setback is 15 feet. The requested variance is 11.7 feet. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 11 days in advance and two submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by Neil Donald, the Township's Chief Building Official. The Development Services Department has no Ontario Building Code objections. The second submission is by Ken Becking, the Township's Director of Public Works. The Public Works Department has no objections. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration. If committee is considering approval, staff recommend the interior side yard setback for the shed be increased, that the cumulative boat port width be reduced, and that a site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for the revegetation of the property. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? Don't have anybody, uh, okay. Is there anyone here to speak in support of this application? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application? Questions from the members? Yes? I guess I'll speak first. Uh, it seems the applicant uh, may not have spent enough time with the planning staff because they, um, Find the meet the four tests and uh, therefore I'm going to listen very carefully to what they're saying and suggest that uh, as we don't see this very often so I would suggest that I or I would agree with uh, what the planning staff is recommending and I think the applicant should make the reductions as requested okay would the planner like to, to comment on that oh yes uh, yeah, if the applicant was uh, actually online, I would suggest deferral, but um, they're, if they're not here, then I don't well, we think still I can defer it. <laughs> and that. Uh, what was the planning department actually uh, suggesting uh, as far as setbacks and, uh, and that? So the concern with the boat port that's being recommended at the moment is the overhangs exceed four feet. Because mm -hmm. the overhangs exceed four feet, we have to take in the entire width of the boathouse, not to the exterior supporting posts. If the overhangs were reduced to four feet, it would reduce um, the width to 25 feet approximately, which would be more appropriate, we feel. Um, 3.3 feet for the shed setback would also be a fair seems a bit too close to the property line and it would be hard to not intrude on the neighbors. Um, we feel that this should be increased. Bryce may have a suggestion for how much this should be increased, however. Yes, Bryce. Uh, for you, Chair Edwards, uh, you know, as you know, uh, from time to time, we do recommend that uh, setbacks or widths or what have you be uh, increased to decrease depending on uh, a given situation. We typically leave that up to committee to decide uh, what extent is uh, 
uh, reasonable increase or reduction as the case may be. Um, you know, it would be helpful, obviously, if the agent or the applicant was here to, uh, to assist committee with that. Um, so it's up to committee. Uh, certainly you could uh, defer the application uh, until uh, someone from that group is available to speak to the matter or alternatively, uh, you could make that decision today. Okay, thank you. Um, actually, while you're on there, I, I'm just looking at the, at the, at the uh, boat port itself. Uh, it, it's fairly modest, like there's uh, the, the walkway uh, four foot three on either side and 32 inches in the center. And it looks like they put the overhang just so they can get out of the rain if, if, if they're docking. And that is water access. Uh, I, I, like, I, I don't think there, it's, it's excessive. Yes, we could take the roof off there. Then when you're getting out of the boat, if it's raining, the water's coming off the roof right on you, is it not? Yeah, it would appear as though the, the uh, roof overhang is just for the reasons you've indicated. Um, you know, unfortunately, because of the way we measure widths, uh, Ms. Right. Walker explained it quite well, because of uh, the increased uh, width of each overhang, <clears throat> and I, uh, it essentially equates to four inches. Um, so it's four inches beyond four feet. So we have to measure the width of the boat port to the exterior of each side of the overhang. If that right. was reduced by four inches on either side, we would be considering the width uh, of 32 feet. Um, which would be to the exterior of each supporting post. So that would uh, decrease the, the overall width quite considerably. Um, so that may be one option for committee would be just simply to reduce the, uh, the width of each overhang such that the width would then be measured to the exterior of each supporting post. Uh, but in regards to the uh, increased setback for the shed, again, it would be helpful to have the, the agent or the applicant here to, uh, to speak to that and what, what opportunities exist in, in that regard. Okay, and uh, what are the views of the uh, committee? Uh, Deferral. Yeah. <laughs> Deferral? Uh, can I ask Bryce? Um, the, the woodshed, how does the neighbor really view that or see that, or is it just a comment that you made? Um, I've, I've been down in some of those water access areas. And I find a lot of them are, are really, really cluttered up with buildings, maybe more buildings than should be on the lot and, and stuff on the lot line. And, and maybe that's character to the area. Uh, yes, uh, Ryan, you had your hand up. Thank you, through you. I had the opportunity to work with Caitlin um, developing the report and the recommendation. I didn't have the chance to visit the property, but I had a chance to review the photos. Generally speaking, when it comes to interior side yard setbacks, where I particularly start to have a concern is the ability to maintain and construct a building without trespassing on the neighbor's property. Um, admittedly, the, the neighbor's dwelling on this lot is far removed from the proposed reduced setback. Absolutely, it's a long way away. Um, like they can't even see the structure. Nevertheless, um, I think that it's incumbent on the township to ensure that when we uh, grant approvals that there's a reasonable expectation that it can be built without having to trespass on the neighbor's property and create uh, a problem where uh, we're currently the bylaw doesn't allow that situation to exist. A 15 foot setback is more than enough room to traverse around all sides of a building. Um, you know, a 3.3 foot setback is very close when you consider that the overhanger soffit also hangs off the outside of the roof. Could a ladder even be um, uh, used to access that side of the building? So it, it just poses these technical challenges and based on the review of the photos there didn't seem to be any compelling reason that would necessarily justify such a significant reduction in the setback. I think those are all my comments. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, Member Green. Uh, for myself, I would just want to pass this with the recommendations that the planners have made. Um, because uh, to me, they, they, ha they have a greater understanding <clears throat> of these rules than we all do. And uh, I think that we should uh, respect their opinion on this one. And anybody else want to comment? Yes, Rob. 
Um, I thought your comment about the overhang was very relevant, Chair Edwards, um, and four inches isn't very much, so I would let the overhang on the boathouse stand. Uh, but I would also agree with uh, the planner, uh, Ryan, that, um, that there doesn't seem to be any reason for moving that shed from five meters to one meter to the, uh, the lot line, and he gave very good reasons why we shouldn't be doing that. Okay, anyone else? Uh, yes, Bryce. Thank you, Chair Edwards. I just wanted to clarify that uh, not too far in the distance past, uh, there was a minor variance that was approved for the sleeping cabin on the, the property at a reduced setback from the easterly side lot line. Uh, but I just wanted to note more for the applicant's understanding, should, uh, should he be listening, um, that in that case, the, the situation was quite different. Um, the lot line abutted a township road allowance, and there was a 66-foot you know, vacant road allowance in that case with no immediate neighbor. Um, and we also had supportive comments uh, from, from the township's public, work re public works uh, department. So I just wanted to... Um, to make that dis to dis distinction that it was uh, quite a bit of a different uh, situation in that case. Well, were you were on, on, on site? No, we, we, we didn't uh, view that one, did we? No, we didn't uh, do a site visit for that. However, uh, the property was subject to the site plan control process and uh, a planner at that time did visit the property and uh, take some photos, which we've included in our report. Okay, I, well, what I'm, I'm just looking at is is they asked for three feet um, and that you're saying it should be uh, 15 feet or uh, or a lesser amount. Well, the, the required setback is 15 feet. Right. Uh, Yes, um, Mr. Allen. Thank you. Um, Chair Edwards, would you mind if I made some comments about the overhangs related to the boat? No, board? no, that's fine. That's what, that's what we're here for in that. Uh, in that. So, so I think that specifically our, our recommendation to reduce the, the boat port or the first story boathouse width is primarily based on a numerical concern. Um, the overhangs, as Bryce, had, as Bryce and Caitlin have mentioned, if we measure to the exterior edge of the overhangs, we pick up over eight feet, eight inches of additional width that normally we would be measured to the exterior face of the walls or the supporting post. Right. So it's, it's these additional four inches around the exterior of the overhang that is generating a significant increase in <coughs> numerical width, where the actual posts are not that wide. Uh, they're approximately 25, 23 feet apart, which is about 17% boathouse width, which is much more in line with the 15% that you'd expect on um, on a, a type two, category two lake. So one of the things that we noted in our report was that the way that the, uh, the notice had been uh, set up was the, the elevations and the floor plans for the boathouse were attached for informational purposes only. The committee is happy with the four inch overhangs plus the four feet beyond the posts, we can ensure that any notice of decision that is circulated clearly shows that it's the overhangs that are permitted the additional width and not the posts mm -hmm. themselves. I think our concerns were related to the notice. There was nothing that would prevent the posts from being um, built out, at yeah. the far edge versus the overhangs. So uh, the notice and decision could be very clear to specify that requirement. Well, I think it should be because uh, if you've ever been to an island or, or, or a river property that is boat access and, and getting out in the rain is no, not fun. And that like, if, if, those, um, if, if those docks were eight feet wide, I'd say no. But like, it's just, it, it's enough just to walk on basically. So, uh, to, to my way of, of thinking, it's very, very modest, but I don't know what the uh, committee feel. Any, any comments? Yes. Well, as I said, I, I uh, so agree with you, Chair Edwards. Um, 
And should they ever choose to put walls in, uh, it won't it won't be as big as uh, extra eight feet wide as pointed out by Mr. Allen. Okay. Yes, Member Creaser. <clears throat> so, um, what is the uh, overhang that wouldn't count for coverage? I'm just curious what they'd have to cut it back to, um, so that the roof wouldn't count. The overhang wouldn't count for coverage. <laughs> Yes. Three, four, inch, four inches on either side. So four inches on either Three, side. Four. Yeah, four inches on either side. Wow. That's what wow. I'm saying. It's, uh, so uh, I mean, I understand. I understand the concept of how you would get a ladder up there. I would have thought that twelve inches would at least allow you to maybe get something up there too, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. I, mean, I think through you, I think there may have been um, some misunderstanding. Um, when I mentioned four inch overhang, that was the overhang on the boathouse as it contributes to width. Was your overhang related to the question of the shed and the side yard setback? Mm -hmm. number three, sir? No, it was the, it's the boathouse because if it's four feet, so you're saying if it's 12 inches, you have to include that 12 inches overhang, or if it's 24 inches, the 24 inches of roof overhang would count for coverage. Yes. Through you, Chair. Um, any portion of overhang that exceeds four feet from the exterior walls or posts, the area of the entire overhang then counted towards, or the width of the entire overhang is counted towards the width of the boathouse and boat port. So even if it was half of an so inch, if, they, if it was four feet and half of an inch, four, four feet and one half of an inch would be counted towards the overhang. It's the fact that it's over four, over so four. They, so they could take six inches off and it wouldn't count. They could take four, four inches off either side and it wouldn't count. The numbers would be reduced to about 17% width, 15 feet, 25 feet wide, excuse me, instead of 32 feet wide. That's so minor. I mean, that's well, so minor. I don't understand why, well, if the applicant, they might accept it. <laughs> yes, Brian. You. I think we just want to make it absolutely clear in the decision if the committee is okay with the additional four feet that it doesn't provide any rights to move the posts any farther the out. Posts. The overhangs that are permitted the four feet exclusively and, and the walls and posts have to stay where they're shown on the earth. Okay, uh, Mr. Pink, could you write something up on, on that, that that would clear that up? Pardon? Yeah. Well, we can just we can just ensure that ensure it in well however you like it. Can't hear you, Chair Edward. Sorry about that. So I think the vote for issue has resolved, but the shed. The shed? So uh, now the shed, do uh, you want to uh, go the full 15 feet or, uh, or, or or give them some latitude that and say, and that five or six feet, it's up to the committee. Yes. Member Green. I think it just should be 15 feet. The applicant is not here to request anything greater than that. I, I would to agree. I think it has to be 15 feet. Anyone else? Yes. It's a real shame the applicant isn't here because we don't understand why they want to move it so close to the lot line. So absent any input from the owner, I would say it should go back to where it was, which was 15 feet. Just build a new one there. Okay, and the only problem is if there's a reason you're going to have to reapply for it, but um, 
Anyone else? Very good reason comment? for uh, through you, Mr. Chair. You might have a very good reason for three feet, and he wouldn't accept six feet. So it's kind of well. No, uh, exactly. No, I'm just, like I'm just looking um, for comments from the the committee. Okay, then David. So it just goes to fifteen feet then. Yep. Yeah. On that one, I'm going to uh, initial. They can initial it afterwards, just because there's no one here. So, if there's any uh, question comes up. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Moved by Member Green, second by Member Creaser, be it resolved that application A1520 to permit the following variances. One, to get the construction of a dock to result in a cumulative width of 32 feet. And two, to permit the construction of a boat port will result in a cumulative width of 32 feet as shown on the plan of elevation drawing attached to the decision. These variants are granted as shown on a plan attached to the notice of decision is hereby subject to the following condition. One, that a site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for re-education of the property and the agreement is re-registered on title. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. That's carried. And we need reasons. Anyone? I would say minor invariance. Pardon? Minor invariance. Right. Invariance. The staff did a good job of covering off what they needed to to make it palatable. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. And the next one is uh, A1720. A1720. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A-17-20 in the name of 2141166 Ontario Incorporated. The subject property is known municipally as 1220 Morinus Road. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plans on uh, beginning on page 162 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicant proposes to construct a 250 square foot gazebo, 39 feet from the high water mark. The minimum front yard setback requirement is 66 feet. The requested variance equates to 27 feet. The gazebo is proposed on a sun deck, 35 feet from the high water mark. The minimum front yard setback requirement for a sun deck is 50 feet. The requested variance equates to 15 feet. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 11 days in advance and two submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by Neil Donald, the township's chief building official. Mr. Donald has no Ontario building code objections. The second submission is by Ken Becking, the township director of public works, and Mr. Becking has no objections. I have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration. If committee is considering approval of the application, staff have recommended that a site plan agreement be entered into wherein the owner will agree to finish the gazebo with a natural earth tone color and will agree not to construct certain minor accessory buildings that would otherwise be permitted in the front yard of the property. These conditions are intended to mitigate resultant and potential built form along the shoreline. I have no further comments at this time and I'd be happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is the applicant or an applicant's agent here wishing to speak? Pardon? Okay, yes. And the owner is also here. Okay. So we'll have uh, Heather first. Good 
Is there applicant for applicant agent here wishing to speak on this? Unmute. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, read your name and, and address. Heather Wilson, Heather Wilson Consulting Services, 1014 Manitoba Street, Bridge, Ontario, P1L1W9. Uh, I am here on behalf of the owners of the property, or actually owners of the company, uh, Stuart and Kim Lang. Um, just wanted to explain a little how we got to where we are. Um, historically, in the area of the proposed gazebo, the property owners have used that area to sit and look out at the lake and, and relax. Um, but it's, it's bald rock there and it slopes quite steeply down to the water. Putting chairs out there, you know, it, it is what they've done in the past, but it's getting a little dangerous um because everything's so uneven and, and what they wanted was a nice level area to put the chairs um, and a nice level access from the cottage to that area um, it's for safety purposes um, as well as to enjoy that spot it's, it's a great spot to look at the lake um, at the time that the uh, foundation what's considered the foundation was put in nobody knew that it would be considered a sun deck. That's something that's in the bylaw, but the general public has no idea that that's a thing. Um, so they just considered it like leveling off an area, it a sitting area. Um, I became involved with the application when it was time to apply for the permit for the gazebo. The owners did get some misinformation. Uh, everyone involved seemed to be under the understanding that any gazebo, regardless of whether it was 200 square feet or 250 square feet, had to be set back any distance from the water. They really thought they could put it where they wanted. Um, so that was a mistake on everyone's part. Uh, once I saw the site, I, I knew there was going to be a problem and uh, the owners consented to having a survey to see exactly what that setback was. Um, that, that then we knew and we've we've applied for the variance um, based on that survey. Um, so the the owners have been using that area for a lot of years. They'd like to continue to use that area, but they would like it to be more level and safe. Um, everybody, you know, starting to feel the aches and pains of getting more mature and uh, the gazebo itself is is a beautiful post and beam structure um, cutting brothers are, are building it and they do a really nice structure um, it's it's going to look quite nice we believe um, the owners are quite willing to enter into the agreement they have no problem whatsoever in uh, putting an agreement on title that they will not build any other structures in the front yard that would normally be permitted by the bylaw and they're quite happy with the earth tone colors um, we feel it's a minor um, ask um, but again uh, that's totally up to committee um, we thank you for your consideration and i'm available to answer any questions that you may have thank you Great. thank you very much is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support of this application? The owner, Stuart Wright. Okay. Yes, uh, the applicant, Stuart Lang. Can, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, good, it works. <laughs> yeah. I have a, a written statement here just to explain uh, why we're here. Um, hello, I'm Stu Lang and I'm joined by my wife Kim who's uh, off camera. <laughs> Thank you for hearing our request for a minor variance to build a 250 square foot open gazebo. Uh, to begin with, we thought it would be best to give you some background as to who we are. I have been vacationing in Muskoka for over 60 years. My parents began renting a cottage at Ross Trevor Resort 
and bought our first family cottage in the 1960s. Personally, I've owned a cottage on Lake Rosso for over 32 years. We bought our present year round cottage five years ago from the builder on property previously owned by my father. We've planted about 100 mature height indigenous trees improved the, and improved the drainage in the front or road side of our cottage, which was an old farmer's field left abandoned. We are committed to maintain and enhance the beauty of Muskoka. We're also major contributors to the Muskoka Conservancy. We need to clarify one thing. Uh, the present uncompleted foundation shown in the pictures is not a sun deck. We have never used it for anything or placed anything on it. We started pouring the foundation in good faith based on receiving incorrect information that we could build a 250 square foot gazebo beyond three feet of the shoreline. When we were informed this criteria was only for a 200 square foot gazebo, we immediately stopped construction and hired Heather Wilson to help us with a request for a minor variance. The gazebo is not a sun deck. We are also not planning to close in the gazebo to become a sleeping area and will not add a pump house, sauna, or hot, hot tub. The location for the gazebo was selected because it was the only flat area on our steep rock frontage. Plus, we cannot set the gazebo back any farther because there is a 15-foot high rock wall behind it. Going up the rock face would require blasting and the removal of trees. We also wanted the gazebo to be a short and easy walk from the cottage. My wife has extensive arthritis and has difficulty navigating hills and difficult terrain. Our property is comprised of two lots totaling six acres, so the gazebo should not dominate the natural shoreline. The gazebo is also not visible to our two neighbors' cottages. The roof of the gazebo will be cedar shakes, the floor will be natural stone, and the structure wood. Thank you for listening to us, and we hope for a positive outcome. Can we get his address? Pardon? Get his address. Then address. Stuart's address. Okay. Sorry. We need we need Stuart Lang's address. Okay, Mr. Lang. Sorry, can we have your your uh, full address? And okay, I also okay. sent it uh, in the Q and A um, to your planner, but it's uh, RR number twenty two, mm -hmm. Rural Route twenty two, and then four two, five, three, side road, all one word, side road 10, that's a number 10 south, and that's Cambridge, Ontario, and the postal code is N as in Norman, three, C as in Kathy, two, V as in Victor, four. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Is there anyone else, uh, no one else here, either in support or in opposition to this application? There'll be questions from the members. Yes, Mr. Bosworth. Mr. Chair, I noticed on the diagram that there, uh, as well as a big fireplace, uh, there appears to be an oven the left of the fireplace. I just want to get confirmation of what that is. Yes, that's a uh, pizza oven. Um, we've had so much fun with my brother in their uh, pizza oven. We decided to uh, do that uh, as well. So we've included uh, an insert, uh, a pizza oven, to be able to cook uh, pizza um, with wood. Yes. The definition of a gazebo states that it's a freestanding roof accessory structure used for the purpose of relaxation in conjunction with a residential dwelling. And I'm just curious about what uh, the planner's opinions would be about having a form of cooking facility in a gazebo. Mr. Sharp? Uh, through you, Chair Edwards, I'll look to uh, either Mr. Pink or Mr. Allen uh, to elaborate if they feel needed, but I don't think we'd have a concern in this case. The uh, structure is uh, an open uh, structure with no walls and uh, it doesn't exceed 250 square feet. I don't believe we'd consider it a, a sleeping cabin in this case. The gazebo is also not connected to the fireplace. 
just gives you free uh, freedom from uh, rain if you're eating. Anyone else? Yes, Rob? Um, if the ap applicant could tell me whether it will have electricity and what form of lighting it will have. Um, we'd really not thought about that. Um, um, really hadn't thought about that. I, I guess that's up to you. Uh, obviously at night it might be nice to have uh, some lighting. Uh, presently we use um, what are the, um, the the solar lights in our uh, Muskoka room? So uh, we would defer to you on that. Yes. Oh, Mike. Sorry, uh, that sure has some serious lighting issues uh, at night and. Um, you know, the people on Tobin Island who have to look at it um, would certainly appreciate that if you have lighting, that there be no lights at night, uh, certainly past a reasonable hour. Uh, if, if you live there, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> the lighting problem. And it, it's a very serious problem. It's probably one of the most egregious lighting issues on the lake. Um, and we know. It's only a consideration, Mr. Lang, but would you give consideration to reduce the shoreline impact of your boathouse by changing the color of the, of the, uh, of the boathouse to dark colors? Because uh, we also have other issues on that same shoreline with um, uh, built structures starting to dominate what is, a, as you know, a beautiful shoreline and we have a new boathouse going in two neighbors down to your north. Um, and so anything that could be done, and this is purely an ask, not a requirement, but uh, my belief is that the structure of shoreline, of shoreline, uh, the color of shoreline bu bu uh, buildings can significantly change the impact of what it is on, on the shoreline. So that is just a consideration the next time you paint. Or the, the present color is a gray color. Uh, it, 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 do you, uh, is that the it's, color you're concerned with? No, it's, there's an awful lot of white trim on it. And okay. It makes it quite dominant. All as, right. As do many, many boathouses around mm -hmm. the lake. But it is such a beautiful shoreline. Uh, if you had colors that matched the, the <laughs> rock, uh, it would yeah. probably almost disappear. Okay, well, that, that, that's a comment. We're looking at, at this other. Anything on the actual gazebo? Yes, Mr. Sharp. Thank you, Chair Edwards. Uh, apologies to, to interject, but I just did want to mention in regard to lighting, uh, there will be a requirement that will be uh, implemented through the site plan agreement for any of the exterior lighting uh, to be uh, dark sky compliant, um, compliant with our dark sky uh, bylaw. So I just wanted to, to mention that as well. Um, and in regard to the uh, condition requiring uh, certain earth tone colors to be used, the uh, committee may have noticed that it is a somewhat unusual uh, condition and certainly uh, isn't one that we uh, um, would want to use, I, I don't think, very frequently. But in this case, we felt that it was uh, uh, a good recommendation based on the, the site-specific uh, considerations on the property, specifically the fact that you know, it's the uh, proposed structure is, is uh, open to the lake and there's very little opportunity to get any plantings in there. Um, so that was in large part why we, uh, we recommended uh, that specific. Uh, I just wanted to clarify that. Okay. I think what I'll do is I'll read the resolution. If there's any questions or comments after that, we can get on to it. <coughs> Moved by member Bosenworth and second by member Green, be it resolved application A1720-214-1166 Ontario Inc. to permit the construction of a gazebo 39 feet from the high water mark and to permit a sun deck 35 feet from the high water mark as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision is hereby approved subject to the following conditions. One, the site plan agreement be entered into along with securities to require that the natural earth tone coloration be applied to the gazebo, and two, the site plan agreement be entered into 
or as the owners agree not to construct a sauna or a pump house. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. Just, just a quick clarification. I was listening, but I didn't catch. Do we have it in that motion, the requirement for earth tone colors? Yep, that was the very first one to require that natural earth tone colorization be applied to the gazebo. Thank you. I just got that. Okay. So all those in favor? That's carry. Reasons? Neighbor support. Mm -hmm. Minor in nature. Um, okay. Landscape lighting and earth tone colors. I'm, uh, I think it's great. Good. Right, next, next, comment. next application is A1820. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A. Dash 18 dash 20 in the name of Gabrensen. The subject property is known municipally as 1192 Whites Road, Unit 4. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 178 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicant proposes to reconstruct a dock. The proposed dock will be 20 feet in width. The maximum cumulative width permitted is 12.3 feet. The requested variance is 7.7 .7 feet. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 11 days in advance and two submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by Neil Donald, the Township's Chief Building Official. The Development Services Department has no Ontario Building Code objections. The second submission is by Kem Becking, the Township's Director of Public Works. The Public Works Department has no objections. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration. If committee is considering approval, Staff recommend a site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for the revegetation of the property. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, hi there, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, hello. Um, I don't really have too much to add. Um, I, uh, I need your name, address, oh, and Oh, I'm sorry, code. yes. Ariel Selva, Selva Contracting, uh, PO Box 785 in Bala, Peter Zero, Charlie, one apple zero. Okay. Um, I don't have too much to add. I think it's fairly straightforward. Um, the Bylaw frontage I know is 82 feet. If you take their actual water frontage, um, they have almost 370 feet, I believe it is, um, just because it's a very odd shape frontage. Um, I'm available for any questions you may have, and I believe the owner might be here as well if uh, okay. you have questions for him. Would the owner like to speak? Okay. Hi everyone, could you hear me? Yes, we can. I need okay. your name, address, and the postal code. Uh, Eric Goodbranson, G-U-D-B-R-A-N-S-O-N, 1192-4, uh, Whites Road, Port Carling, P as in Paul, 0B as in Brian, 1J as in John O. Okay, thank you. So thank you everyone for hearing me today. It's, uh, I'm actually sitting out on my points at this point. Um, my, uh, I do have an awkward, uh, awkward lot. It is a point. I don't know if you guys are willing to take a look at this, but I'm standing right here. I'll give you a, excuse me, that's on me. I'd love to turn this around. Um, but this is kind of what the point looks like and it's 392 feet in total frontage. Um, and I believe it comes from the narrowest point is which you're seeing right here. And the dock is planned to go out uh, towards the end of the point just over here. 
Um, it's a, uh, I mean, I, to be honest with you, that's, that's where I believe it's best suited to go um, for the simple reason of um, it within this bay here, my neighbors might be putting in a dock as well, which would build towards my space. And over here, the water is about two feet deep regardless. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's what I have to add for you guys. Thank you very much. For your okay. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application? Questions from the members? Yes, Mr. Bazalud. Just curious, is that a four slip boathouse on the dock on the, uh, I couldn't quite figure it out. Uh, no, this is, there's, there's no boathouse going here. Um, it's, uh, it's a small lake. You would, I think there's only one boathouse on the lake and that's been grandfathered in since the sixties. So, uh, it's just a dock. Sorry, my question, I <laughs> shouldn't have said boathouse. Are those four boat slips? Oh, no boat slips. Thank you. Any other questions? I'll read the motion. Moved by Member Creaser, second by Member Bosomworth, be it resolved that application A1820 to permit the construction of a dock which will result in a cumulative width of 20 feet as shown on a plan attached to the notice of decision is hereby approved subject to the following condition. One, that a flight plan agreement be entered into along with securities for revegetation of the property. This agreement is registered on title. If this approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. And that's carried. And the reasons? I think the planning have done an excellent report here. It's not gonna add to the built form dominating the shoreline. And it's uh, probably better privacy for the neighbors. So I'm, I'm totally in favor. Okay, thank you. I would add that uh, it's much better than what would be allowed as of right. Uh, 30 feet versus 66 feet is yep. uh, much better for the lake. And the next application is A19-20. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A-19-20 in the name of Elliot. The subject property is known municipally as 1731 Brackenrig Road. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 192 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicant proposes to construct a new garage. The proposed garage will result in 10.6% lot coverage within 200 feet of the high water mark. The permitted coverage within 200 feet of, from the high water mark is 10%. The variance requested is 0.6% or 235 square feet. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 11 days in advance and two submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by Neil Donald, the township's chief building official. The Development Services Department has no Ontario Building Code objections. The second submission is by Ken Becking, the township director of public works. The public works department has no objections. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no objections. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. See applicant and applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this. Agent is coming in, Zach Allison. Okay. Good afternoon, Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, good afternoon, Chair, committee, and members. Uh, my name is Zach Allison. I'm a representative of the owner today. My address is Box 476, Port Carling, P0B1J0. Um, I'd like to thank staff for their uh, report and uh, positive findings. I don't really have much to add to this. It's uh, a pretty a simple cut and dried one as far as I'm concerned. Um, if there are any questions from the members or staff, I'd be happy to answer those now. Okay, thank you very much. And if the owner would like to speak, that's fine as well. Hello, it's uh, Paul Elliott, the owner here. Were you uh, deferring to me? 
I went quiet. Uh, Great. Yes, we need your full name and address, please, and the mailing and, and your postcode. Sure, it's Paul Elliott, 299 Douglas Avenue in Oakville, Ontario, L6J3S5. And as the owner, I have no further comments to add than what from what uh, Zach had to say. Okay, very good then, thank you. And I just have to ask, is there anyone here wishing to speak in support of this application? And anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application? But you want to bring her on, see what? And that you want to bring her in then and just see what? Okay. Hello. We have somebody joining us. So it's is 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 the lady muted then or? Uh, Okay. Oh, maybe she's trying to, yeah. Hello? Okay then. So I don't think there's anyone else there. I did ask if anybody was in support or anybody is in opposition and we didn't get anyone coming through. Any uh, questions or comments? I'll read this. <clears throat> Uber member Quinn, second member Creaser, be it resolved the application A19 slash 20 Elliott to permit the construction of a single story garage which will result in a lot coverage of 4,448 square feet or 10.6 of the lot area within 200 feet of the high water mark as shown on a plan attached to the notice of decision is hereby approved. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. That's Terry. And the reasons. Yep. It's minor in nature and it's a long way back from the waterfront. Good, okay, thank you. And I think that concludes everything. Uh, there's no other uh, information items, no new business. Uh, anything else, David? Then I will read the next motion. Moved by Member Green, seconded by Member Quinn, be it resolved that meeting adjourned at 12, 11 p.m. All those in favor. And that's carried. Thank you very much. I much appreciate it. And we'll see you next meeting. So say thank you everyone and I'll need signatures again. I'll be in touch. Yep. So. <laughs>